Take a look at this simple experiment. We have two magnetic balls inside two plastic tubes. The attraction between the balls is so strong that they stay at the position and don't fall down. Now the question is this. If we rotate the two tubes like this, what happens? To make it easier, I will give some options. Will the balls A go down, B stay where they are, C go up or D explode and kill everybody in a radius of 50 kilometers? You are right, they will go down. Hmm, never mind, for some reason they will go up. I guess this is some kind of physics magic. But okay, let's change the direction of rotation. They still go up. I understand nothing. Let's turn the tubes upside down. They still go up. No matter which way we rotate the tubes, the balls will always go up. I have two aims with this video. Firstly, I want to convince you that this makes absolutely no sense, physics is broken, that this is a bug in the matrix and hence argue that you are just a brain in a vet. Afterwards, I will show that there is actually a pretty nice explanation. Therefore, you probably don't live in the matrix and you have to continue the meaningless absurdity we all call life. Nice. Let's start with the first part. Imagine you are a second year physics student. Really get into the character, you don't have any social life and your only pastime activity is solving physics exercises. To really immerse yourself into the role you can also pause the video, study physics for at least one year and come back afterwards. However, because you already suffer through the lectures of electrodynamics, you are certain that you know the answer. Moving magnets produce electric fields. And the moving magnet inside the electric field pushes the magnets in some direction. So maybe, just maybe, the left magnet produces an electric field so that the right magnet gets pushed by an upward force. But there's a flaw with this explanation. Maybe you as a second year physics student already know it. When you invert all the fields, the direction of the force also changes. We can visualize this very nicely. There is this famous right hand rule, which thankfully you already know as a second year physics student. But just to reiterate. Take your right hand, you probably have one attached to your right arm. If not, I'm deeply sorry. Now when your thumb points into the direction in which the magnetic monopole moves, align your index finger into the direction of the electric field. Now your middle finger points into the direction of the force applied to the magnetic monopole. This is called the Lorentz force and it's normally formulated with electric charges in magnetic fields. But it also works when reversing the roles of the magnets and the electric charges and the fields. At least the person wrote a paper proving it and I have an unreasonable deep emotional trust in this paper and the author. Now notice if you flip your thumb and therefore the movement of the magnets, the direction of the force changes. Or by flipping the electric field and therefore your index finger, again the force changes direction. Because the balls always go up, the force and therefore your middle finger should also always go up. But this cannot be the case, because when changing the direction of the rotation of the tubes, the magnet movement and therefore the field changes. So there should be a combination where the force points down. I actually didn't have to talk this long about fields and so on. But now you really feel like a physics student with all the gang signs you made. Sorry. Because there is an even simpler reason why this doesn't work. How do the magnets or the fields know where up is? There has to be a force always pointing up or down. And there are only two candidates, gravity or Earth's magnetic field. Because the Earth's magnetic field is too weak to do anything except pushing a compass around, it has to be gravity. But I hear you. To convince you that it's really gravity, I made a little experiment. I went on the freefall tower in my city and looked what happened when in freefall. If it's really gravity, the balls shouldn't move when in freefall. And, as you can see, the balls don't move. But there is a problem. Normally gravity goes into this direction and not this one. What is the effect of gravity on the balls? Let's imagine we have huge balls. And these balls are normal bar magnets. When they are still sticking to the wall, the magnets would clearly bend. We can also calculate this tilting angle. First we calculate the magnetic potential energy under this angle. We make the assumption that these balls are point like dipoles. Now we can derive the equation of the magnetic potential energy. If alpha is the tilting angle, we can express the magnetic moment mu of the left ball by this vector. 
and the right one by this vector. Plugging this into the equation and simplifying, we get this surprisingly simple equation. It's just a cosine squared. This makes total sense. Just from experience, if you want to align two magnets, they will always align north to south. This is the minimum for alpha equal to zero. At alpha equals to pi half, one magnet points up and the other one points down. This is kind of stable, but for familiar bar magnet, it's really stable. However, when dealing with magnetic spheres, changing the angle just a little bit, it will rush down to the minimum and align north to south. But what does gravity have to do with this? Let's imagine we are at a minimum, so the magnets will align north to south. Let's turn on gravity very slowly. As we argued before, the magnets would tilt. We can imagine that the magnets would slowly roll down the tubes. We can calculate the potential energy by the well-known formula E is equal to m times g times h, where m is the mass of the ball, g is the gravitational acceleration on earth and h is the height of the object. E and m are given and h is the distance the balls roll down. So h is the tilting angle alpha times the radius of the ball. There has to be a minus in front because we are lowering the energy when rolling down. So the energy due to gravity is m times g times alpha times r. Now we just have to look at the total energy, which is the magnetic term plus the gravitational term. You can already imagine what happens. We shift the energy away from zero. So the tilting angle at rest is not zero. We can calculate the tilting angle by setting the derivative of the energy to zero. Short side note, there is actually a mass where the magnets should roll down. This happens when the arc sign is undefined, so the argument is bigger than 1. But I'm not sure if this is physical, but it would be interesting to test it. You could also do some torque calculations to get the gravitational energy, but as you can see they are annoying and they give exactly the same result. Now, what is the effect of this angle alpha? When assuming the magnetization axis to be fixed and simultaneously rotating the tubes, the ball feels a force due to friction at the touching point between the ball and the tube. It's marked with a red dot here. The axis is fixed, we push at the red dot and the ball now begins to rotate around the magnetization axis. It spins. We can also see it in the experiment. When rotating the tubes, the ball spins and if we rotate the tubes in the other direction, the ball spins in the other direction. But why does the spinning motion of the ball result in an upwards movement? To understand this, we can switch to the top view. Not all of the torque from the tube rotation gets translated into the spinning motion. The point of friction also shifts or rotates the balls a bit like this. You can maybe imagine that because of the spinning direction, they will roll up the tubes. However, to make it a bit more clear, let us look at only one ball next to the wall. With this 3D view, it's somewhat intuitive that the ball pushes the wall down or because the wall is fixed, the ball gets pushed upwards. This is it. Now rotating the tubes in the other direction results in the balls spinning in the other direction. However, the balls also get shifted in a different direction. So again, they roll up. This even works when rotating the tubes in the same direction. Here the magnets spin like this and they get shifted like this. And still, they will roll up. That is the explanation of this mystery. At the end I want to talk more about the fact that the upwards movement goes against our physical intuition. At least it goes against my physical intuition. And if we go back one last time to the perspective of the second year physics student, you may also feel the same sickness and disgust. I think this feeling comes from the fact that this problem is so simple, there are no tricks played, but simultaneously it breaks a fundamental symmetry. The time reversal symmetry, which often holds for very simple problems like this. If I have a screw that I screw into some wood, and now if I rotate the screw into the other direction, it should come out of the wood again. But that's not happening here, so let's talk a bit about the symmetry. Mainly because it's important for this problem, but also because it's fun and it's nice to visualize. Here are two billiard boards. One of them runs forwards in time and the other one backwards. Can you tell me which one runs forwards and which one backwards? No, this indicates that this system is actually time reversal symmetric or T symmetric for short. Other examples might be a very bouncy ball or our solar system. 
but in our day-to-day -day life the symmetry seems to be broken all the time. For example, normally balls stop at some point. This is because there is some friction and dissipation that produces heat and increases entropy. What we can see in our billiard experiment. Are you maybe now able to tell me in which direction time runs? Clearly the left configuration runs backwards because it just doesn't make sense that all the billiard balls move into this neatly ordered configuration. This is the magic of the second law of thermodynamics. The entropy, or intuitively speaking, the disorderedness, increases over time. You can also argue that this is actually the defining feature of time, or the error of time. But okay, all of this talk about the time reversal symmetry was maybe a bit extensive. You turn the tubes one way, the balls go up, then you turn the tubes another way, then they still go up. However, when reversing the time, the balls go down. So time reversal symmetry is broken. But where? The spinning of the ball is still fine, because when flipping the rotation of the tubes, the spinning direction also changes. It gets broken when the ball starts getting shifted, because reverting time doesn't change in which direction the balls shift. However, when rotating the tube in the other way, the balls get shifted in the other direction. So we can differentiate if the time goes forward or backwards. A more detailed explanation of this mechanism and an argument that this is something special or totally normal is trivial and is left to the listener as an exercise. But this should be it for this video. I left out a lot of details and simplified the problem a lot. So for more information and a more in-depth discussion on the time reversal symmetry breaking in the system, you should check out this paper. I hope you found it as interesting as I did. And if you disagree with anything, you can leave a comment and let me know. Thanks for watching.